Guys, uh, how great is our God, right? So we just want to share this song with you guys. Sing or praise, and, you know, praise God. Listen to the words, listen to the music. Start thinking about it, you know. Sing along. Sing along, that's right, you know. Start thinking about it. You know, what is going through your mind when you hear this song, which is beautiful and amazing song, okay? Praise our God. Sing with me, how great. Father, for everybody who you brought today, uh, there's no accidents, there's no coincidences in the kingdom of God. Amen. We know that everybody here is for a divine appointment, Lord. We just ask that all the servants and the volunteers here can seek and search out the people who are in need of prayer, who are in need of a uh, tender embrace, Lord. We just thank you in advance for what you're going to do through your word and through your service here today at the Civic Center. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's hear it for the band. Good awesome. Also, let's hear it for the sun. 
right. Which son am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let, let me let me pray again because um, this message is really powerful and and uh, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, God. Thank you again for bringing everybody here today. Thank you for the sunlight that you provided us right now. Uh, but more importantly, thank you for your son, for allowing us to be reconciled with you through Jesus Christ. We have, an, we have a way of having a relationship with you now and, and a home in heaven. Our past can be forgiven and we have a purpose for living, Lord Jesus. So God, I pray right now for this particular message. Although we talked about it last week and we're talking about it again, it's a very important message on how to make amends, something that you've called us to do as Christians when we harm somebody, how to take responsibility for what we've done, how to be peacemakers, Lord Jesus. So be with every person here today as they hear this message. Enter their hearts and enter their minds and speak through me, Lord Jesus, and my mother in our testimony later today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So if you were here last week, you saw that we talked about amends and we had an amends acronym and we basically uh, talked about that and we talked about how we are, uh, you know, how God wants us to really focus on our relationships, how to how to really, really manage our relationships uh, much better. Um, and although this is the same topic as last week, we're teaching this message a little bit differently. There's a little bit of a spin to it. It's like reading the Bible, a, a translation. Let's say you read New Living Translation, but then you read it King James. Totally different translations, right? But it's still the same meaning, but taught in a different way. And that's exactly what we're doing here today, because we really feel that this particular message is very important for all of us to learn when you hit that situation where you've wronged somebody and you feel guilty about it. What do you do with that? So amends is what God calls us and commands us to do as Christians. He wants us to take responsibilities for when we wrong somebody, when we hurt somebody. Now I'm just gonna give you a recap because some of you here are new and I wanna tell you exactly what we're talking about. We've been for the past four or five months, we've been talking about a series called Life's Healing Choices, which is a, a summary uh, series from the Celebrate Recovery Program. How many of you have heard of Celebrate Recovery? Okay, a few of you. It's like AA, uh, it's a Christ Center uh, recovery program that started at Saddleback Church like 25 or so years ago. And so we're teaching you the principles of the Celebrate Recovery Program here. So let's review. The first choice, there's eight choices we make in the Celebrate Recovery series, in the Life Healing Choices series. The first one is the reality choice. What is that? The reality choice is admitting that your life is unmanageable, that you can't manage your life on your own. You've tried and it hasn't worked. That we just say, hey, I, my way is not working. My way is not working. And you, and you, you admit that. You admit that you're, you're stepping out of denial into reality. Which leads us to the hope choice, which is the second choice. The hope choice is admitting that your hope doesn't come from you. Your hope doesn't come from another person. It doesn't come from a substance. It doesn't come from money. It comes from God. He's the only way you can get the true hope that you need for your life to change. Which leads us to the third one, the commitment choice. So once you've surrendered your the hope and you say, God, you are my hope, you are the only way, then God calls us to commit all of our lives to him. Not part of our lives, but all of our lives. Especially that area that is the most difficult to surrender to God. So then you commit that. And then once you do that, God wants you to clean house. He wants you to examine your life. He wants you to go back and look at the things that you've done wrong. The things that you've hurt, how you've hurt people, but all you, also how you've been hurt. Areas in your life that you need healing for. God wants you to analyze every relationship and every action that you've done, every sin that you've committed that has kept you from God, that, is, that has been a barrier between you and God. Because he wants you to identify that. Then once you do that, then he wants to lead you into the transformation, which is surrendering your character defects one at a time to God. Well, I struggle with pride. Surrender that to God. I struggle with uh, addiction. Surrender that to God. I struggle with selfishness, I struggle with anger, I struggle with lust. There's many things that we struggle with. So you identify our character defects, the areas in which we need to surrender to God and focus on God as you do that. So then, and once you're done with the transformation, you go into what we're talking about today, the relationship. Amen. The Bible is a relational book. Mm -hmm. Celebrate Recovery is a relational program. God doesn't ask us to go off into the mountains and just stay there for the rest of our lives. How are we to learn love? How are we to learn the greatest commandment of life? To love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. God added that second part to that because he wants us to learn love. How do you learn love? 
if you don't have opportunities to love. So God wants to teach us how to love. And one of the best ways to do, do that is by learning to make amends. Next week, we're going to talk about forgiveness, how to forgive those people that have wronged you. So if you uh, struggle with that, next week will be an excellent week for you to come because we're going to be talking about that for the next two weeks. So let's look at principle six. If you pull out your message notes, you'll see this. It says, evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me, and make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. Now, it would be nice if we could just go come to God and say, okay, God, I did this to this person 10 years ago. I feel bad about it. Please forgive me. And God says, okay, you're forgiven. And that's it. You don't have to do anything afterwards. God's saying, no, 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 no. You wronged somebody. You need to take responsibility for it. As a matter of fact, there's even a verse in the Bible that says, leave your gift at the altar, right? And make amends, basically. Reconcile with your brother. That's what God wants us to do. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. Now, I want you to think about this as we go through this series. God isn't just changing your heart. He's working on their heart, too. Whatever damages that, that is done through the actions that we do to others... God is in, in the process of trying to heal that person as well. And he's going to use you to be a part of that process. And if somebody has hurt you in your life, and God has put it on their heart to come to you, man, that may be life-changing for you. I've actually had that happen to me. Somebody hurt me, one of my best friends, when I was in a teenager. He, he betrayed me. He hurt me. I, he gave me drugs, and I took it because I wanted to maintain the relationship with him and that's what he wanted I almost died and so when I came out of the hospital I heard that um, that he was basically saying if I tell anybody who gave me the drugs that he's gonna have people come and, and hurt me so to speak so not only did I almost die but he basically was threatening my life because of that and I that was it with the relationship and many years went by I think about a 15 years went by and so one day I was working out at uh, 24 Hour Fitness, right? And he was there. All these years, I haven't seen him. He was there, he came up to me, he said, Chris, all these years I've held on to this pain of what I did to you. And I'm so sorry for what I did. I'm so sorry for what I did. I've, I've lived with this, this weight, this guilt, this shame for all these years. And now I'm saying sorry to you. And when it happened, I was like, oh, it's okay, it's no big deal. But it was a big deal at the time. It was a big deal, and time has passed. It didn't really affect me as much. But it's amazing how much it affected him. All these years, 15 years, he's held on to that. My question to you guys is, what have you been holding on to for many years? What do you need to give up to God? What areas do you need to make amends to today? If there's something that comes into your mind, I want you to keep it there. Keep it in your mind for right now. Because God has pointed that specific thing out to you for a reason. He doesn't want you to waste that. It's time to let that go. It's time to make, make that right and make amends. And in Matthew 5.7 it says, Happy are the merciful, for they have been shown mercy. And it also says, Matthew 5, nine, Happy are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peacemakers. I said last week, one of Jesus' titles was the Prince of Peace. He wants us to be peacemakers. He doesn't want us to cause division. He doesn't want us to cause conflict. He doesn't want us to get caught up in the anger that's out there right now, especially right now with the politics. He wants us to be peacemakers because our world needs it. And now how you do that, one of the ways is you learn to make amends. You learn to make amends and you learn to do it the right way. And we're gonna teach you specifically how to do that. So last week we touched on it kind of, this week we're going to give you very clear instructions on how to do that because we want you guys to learn this. Very, very important. Step eight. Celebrate Recovery Step eight. It says we made a list of all the persons we have harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Not some of them, but all of them. It says do unto others as you would have them do to you. Luke 6, 31. It's okay to be redundant with this message. It's okay. Because God wants to teach us. For me, it took me many years to learn this. Many, many, many years to learn this. I kind of learned it, but I never applied it. And once I applied it, God showed me how much he can remove that guilt in my life and how I can have healing on areas that I've held on to for so long. And God wants the same for you. 
You know, yesterday is funny. Um, my daughter and, and Jenna and Kaylee, we saw the movie Zootopia. You guys ever heard of the Zootopia, the new Disney movie that came out? Yeah, pretty cool movie. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it was interesting because there was two scenes in the movie that were on this, making amends. It's pretty cool, right? Disney's finally getting it right. It's not about princesses and happily ever afters. They're actually teaching you real life things. And there was a couple uh, uh, scenes in the movie where there was a, a, they actually made amends. And one scene in particular, was a fox. There was a fox and a bunny. The bunny, I won't give you the, give it away, but the fox did something really bad to the bunny. He, he hurt the bunny when he was, the bunny was a kid. And the bunny held on to that for all these years. But we didn't find out until a decade or so later that the fox did too. So when they saw each other, the same, the same fox, but he basically felt bad. And he's the same thing. He said, I felt so bad. I was in a different place back then. I was selfish and I'm really sorry for what I did. And, uh, you know, and then, and then also later in the movie, the, the bunny said something bad to another fox. And so she's crying, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, please forgive me. And he ended up forgiving her, which is cool. But it was really awesome. It was a t two, two touching scenes that, that really stood out to me. And, it, and it's really because God wants us to do that. And even children can do that. Even our kids can learn how to make amends, right? Right. They can, they can take Amen. responsibility for what, it, what, what they've done. It's a good thing when we teach those principles to our children. So it says on your notes, how to make amends. We're gonna give you three steps. And on, on step two, we're gonna give you how to, how, to do, how to do this. Basically, how to ask for forgiveness the right way. There's things to consider to do that. But let's look at the first one. Very important, the first one. You can't do the, these unless you do the first one. Which is make a list of the people I have harmed and what I did to them very important you do that. Now here's some questions. Now we said this last week, but we want to give you some questions that are more specific, that can get your mind thinking is maybe, oh yeah, I did that. I, did, I probably did that. Did you owe a debt to anyone that you never repaid? Have you broken a promise to anyone? Right? Have you both broken? You said you were going to do something and you didn't do it. Maybe your kids, maybe your mom, maybe your family. Are you guilty of over-controlling or being over possessive of anyone. Wow. Relationships, right? Romantic relationships, yeah. Or our kids, we can be overly controlling of our kids. We, we do that. Have you verbally, physically, or emotionally abused anyone? Have you made anybody cry? That's a good question. Have you been unfaithful to anyone? Yeah. I admit, I have. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. Have you lied to anyone? I think we can all raise our hand on that one, right? Have you lied to anyone? So we gotta make a list. Very important that you make a list. And when you make a list, basically what you're doing is you're taking that first step out of denial. You're, you're saying, you know what, I did that. And I'm taking responsibility for what I did. And I'm not just gonna let it sit, simmer in my head anymore. I'm actually going to make a list and I'm gonna work on each and everything that I write down. That's what God wants us to do. Because when it stays in your head, it's going to get lost in your head. And you're going to forget about some of the things. Until something triggers you and then it comes up again. Right? Number two. The second thing you do to, to make amends is you think about how you would like someone to make amends to you. Now this is basically setting the precedent on how we're going to do this. We're going to enter into it with humility. Imagine somebody wronged you. Okay? Somebody hurt you really bad really bad and you've had issues and it's it's caused damage in your life in your relationships you've had difficulty trusting you've had nightmares about it maybe so to speak and it's really affected your life imagine if that same person came up to you and apologized to you how would you want them to do it would you want them to say oh, hey, hey 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 remember that thing i'm sorry have a good day they just walk away is that sincere no you would want them to do it with humility, with sincerity. You would want them to understand that what they did hurt you. And it really hurts you. So when they take that step of amends, you want it to be real. You don't want it to be fake. See, the problem with our world nowadays is there's so many people that are in a hurry. They're so busy. They're so distracted. And the things that are in their hearts, they try so hard to numb it, to run from it, to busy themselves, and they don't deal with the issues that are affecting them, right? We're the same way. 
We are the same way. In the areas in which we need to make amends to somebody, we have to slow down. We have to pray to God. And we say, God, you are at the forefront of this. You are at the center of this. Please help me to deal with this and to take responsibility the right way for what I've done. In Luke 6.31, it says, Do unto others as you would like them to do to you. Very important. You think that. Well, what if I don't like myself? What if I don't care if people hurt me? Then that's an issue between you and God to work out. Because it's, a, it's an issue of value. How you value yourself. And when you look at the cross. Where's the, where's the cross? When you look at the cross. And you see how much Jesus stretched out his hands. You know what that's saying? He's saying that's how valuable you are to him. That he would give up his life for you. So God has a lot of work to do in a lot of us. He has a lot of work to do in me. And so as we're going through this process, God needs to be in every step of it, in every part of it, in every relationship, in every sin, in every way that we've wronged somebody, he needs to be a part of that. We can't just try to do this on our own. We need God with every step of this. Now we're gonna teach you right now on how to ask for forgiveness. There's some, there's uh, five points that we have on how to ask for forgiveness. So I've called my mom to, talk, to teach on that. So let's hear from my mom when she comes up and talks about that. all day I drove in from the desert and my car was going from one lane to another can you hear me yeah okay great um, this makes me think about one thing the two most important commandments that Jesus that God asked us to do was to love God with all our heart soul and strength and mind and to love one another if we were able to do this, this would be really easy. This probably almost wouldn't even be necessary, but it'd be really easy. Because the problem is that I find is our perception is off. And it's not our fault completely. It's not all our fault. For instance, how you're feeling and thinking as a child is very different than when you're an adult. So, if you had parents that were hurting you as a child, you're taking things literally and it really goes to your heart and it scars you. But if you're in the grace and the Lord allows you to get through this and you get older, you can start to understand what maybe your parents were going through. And what that does, if you start to look at all perceptions here and understand that, with mercy and grace, your attitude changes. So what we're doing is we're not just thinking about ourselves. So when we make amends, there's very important things you want to do. First of all is timing. Do it at the right time. There is a right time and a right way to do everything. Ecclesiastes 8.6. This makes me think of my marriage. It'll be this June that my husband and I will have been married. We'll be married for 19 years. Thank you. But in the beginning of our marriage, we were going to get an annulment. And it was bad because uh, I was reacting to him. He was reacting to me and all this stuff. So I remember in the middle of the night, I was looking down at him sleeping. And it made me realize I'm not the only one going through this pain. He's in it too. He's in it too. And for the first time, I started to think about someone else more than my own validity and reaction. Now, right time, I could have woken him up in the middle of the night and said, hey, I want to tell you I'm sorry for my part, but that would have been the right time. It would have been grumpy and all those things. So we really have to choose the right time. For instance, if you realize you did something to someone else, you don't want to call them up in the middle of the night. You do not want to call them up after having alcohol or drugs. You do not want to do those things. And you definitely, whenever you do these things, want to bring the Lord with you. 
do not go there on your own. Do not go there on your own. The next is do it with the right attitude. Speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4.15. You don't want to go in there just saying, I want to feel better about myself, so I'm going to lay this all out. And it could be really hard for them. You have to have the right attitude. It isn't who's wrong or right. It's about the healing. It's about the healing. The next one is do it without expectations. Focus only on your part. Don't expect anything back from the person you're trying to make amends to. If you go in there thinking, I'm going to say I'm sorry, especially if it's like a boyfriend or girlfriend thing, I'm going to say I'm sorry, and then they're going to forgive me, and they're going to want me back and all that. That's an expectation, and you really should check your motives. Because the motive is very important. The motive is your part of it. Now, rarely, rarely is anybody 100% wrong. You could only have 2%. 2%. But that's your percent, and that's what you are making amends for. So if you're thinking, well, I want to say I'm sorry, but I don't want them to think I did it. You're doing your percent. The rest is between them and the Lord. And you may think, well, it's too late. The person I was mad at or I hurt or whatever, they could be dead. I'm going to tell you another great story. My mother, when I was five years old, she used to leave me on street corners and say, when she was upset and mad, leave me on street corners and say, you fend for yourself. You go fend for yourself now, you take care of yourself. I was really scared. I'm five years old, right? But five years old, I had to start thinking about how am I gonna get back near where I live so I can find people that know me to help raise me. This is what I'm thinking at five. So of course I developed the fear and scar of abandonment, not trusting, all those things, very scary. And I carried that for many years. I still had a relationship with my mom. My mom raised me, my dad uh, and my mom were divorced when I was two. So um, my mom raised me, and there's a lot of things that, that she did do great, but I always had that. You know, she was very scary and all over the place and moody. Well, that's what I looked at, and I thought of myself as a victim. I really thought I had the most horrible, strange childhood in the world. Because I didn't share that with anybody. I mean, just the way I thought, I mean, this was my life, and I'm weird, I'm different. I just want to be normal like other people. We'll talk about a long time from then. I just recently found my mother's Bible. My mother died um, 35 years ago, 36 years ago. And um, we never had fights or anything like that and stuff like that. I got out of the house as soon as I could, got married when I was 18. I just wanted to get out of there. But I found my mother's Bible and, wow, reading some of the things she wrote. I always thought my mother didn't love me. She did love me. What I neglected to remember and think about it's like a year before I was born, my grandparents died within four hours apart. She was living with her parents. They died. My mother had kind of a breakdown. She was very scared. She got married quickly to my dad, had me, and just was very scared and, and was all over the place. And uh, that's all I saw. Now, I'm not going to be hard on myself because I was a child. I was a child, and I don't expect children that went through pain to feel guilty about that. But what does happen, and the beautiful process that Jesus has in store for you, the healing, is when you live long enough and you look at the whole picture, and I could clearly stand here and say, I'm sorry, Mom, for my part. I'm sorry for not trying to look beyond me even as an adult, which I could have. And I can't wait to see her in heaven because she had it hard. Now you're going to have parents that you've separated from, family, children. A lot of you have children here. You're going to have to learn those words, I'm sorry. And you're going to have to learn it from a humble place. Not from a deserving place, but from a humble place. 
A lot of you are separated from your parents. Let me explain one thing. If you're a tree that's fallen, if you're a tree that's fallen and you're hurting, you think you're just hurting yourself. When you fall, you take down other trees. There's other family members that love you. There's children, if you have them, that wish they were with you. There's parents that wish they could still hold you. And if there's any silly reason, stupid little thing like, she said something and it really upset me, so I'm out of here. That's Satan. And Satan will keep you angry and keep you angry and keep you separated. And that's what Civic Center here is all about. The separation. He loves it. He loves to see you separated. He loves to see you hurting. He loves to see you down and out. And there are so many people that I know want to hold you. And if you don't have family, we're your family right here. We are your family. We are your Christian family. And Jesus has brought us here to be your family. There is nobody here that's junk. Nobody here who's worthless. Everybody here needs love, including myself. The last one is do it in an appropriate way. Or one next to the last, do it in an appropriate way. So thoughtless words can wound as deeply as any sword. Be wise when you're spoken and heal. They can heal. Words can heal rather than hurt. Think carefully about what you say and how you will say it. Ask yourself if making amends will do more harm than good. So if you go to somebody, you had a relationship and, and you cheated on them or something like that, and now that person is remarried or married or something like that, you go up to them and say, I'm sorry, and you're messing up their marriage. That's not appropriate. That's definitely not appropriate. Consider any possible damage, and I can't say this more than once. Take Jesus with you. No, I don't have to say nothing. No. And the last one, and see there's anger all around us. Nothing new here. Absolutely nothing new. Make restitution whenever possible. If you've taken something, return it. If you owe somebody, pay it back. There, there may be some times that you cannot restore, but don't underestimate the power of a sincere apology. In the name of Jesus, right now I'm going to pray for the Civic Center. But there's continuous anger, and Satan sure wants to get our attention. He doesn't want us here. He doesn't want any of us here, and he certainly doesn't want us to heal. And he certainly doesn't want the light in Civic Center. But we are going to continue to be here. And I say in the name of Jesus, Satan, or anybody who's talking right now through him, Shut up, Satan, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, he is more powerful. We know the end of this story. We know the end of the story. So please take care of everyone here in the Civic Center. Lead them to your life, Lord. Lead them to your life. We love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, my mom has had laryngitis for like 10 days now. And it's amazing. When we're weak, that's when God takes over, right? Let's hear from my mom. That was very powerful stuff. And in case you missed what she said in regards to relationships, and maybe that could be part of the reason as to why we're here, why we feel isolated and abandoned and alone, she touched on it. Maybe there's